We are blessed to be in your presence. We are blessed by you because of you. The things you did for us, Lord, that no person can take, no sacrifice, no payment can be made to give back what you gave, Lord. You have done it all. You sacrificed your very life to be able to save us, to be able to hold us, to be able to keep us in your, in your presence, Lord, to give us a path to be able to find you to be able to make it because without you we cannot get there lord we are sin we are dirt we are beyond saving but you gave us a way you gave us the path you gave us the light guide us as we go into our service today lord bless our pastor put your healing hands upon him and get him well father get us on the path that you would have us, Lord. I feel things are fixing to break out for us, Lord, and we are excited, we are anticipating, and we are hoping in you because you are our, our guide. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, uh, you may be seated. Uh, I want to give you an update on our pastor. I did talk to him uh, this week. He went to the doctor Thursday. He... Uh, uh, the doctor said he was right where he was supposed to be at this point. Uh, he is hoping uh, to be able to be here next Sunday, so we're looking forward. Uh, keep him in your prayers. Keep him, uh, uh, just pray for him. Keep him going into that he continues to heal the pace he's supposed to and that we will uh, we'll have him here soon with us to be able to give us uh, his mission and to keep us back on our track and on our in our direction. I uh, also want you to uh, keep our uh, our sister Lindsay's mother-in-law is in the hospital. If you would, keep her in your prayers also. Uh, uh, she is not doing well, so hopefully uh, uh, just pray for peace. Uh, so without further ado, I want to introduce our, uh, our person doing the sermon today. Uh, I forget his name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love my brother Craig. Uh, he's one of our deacons. He is going to carry today's service. Uh, brother Craig, bring it on, bud. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before I begin, uh, let's like, like to pray. Um, mainly for me, <laughs> but also that this message is going to resonate to everybody that's here and to everybody online because it's already been pointing the finger at me. So, <laughs> so it would bow our heads. Oh. Or this is not what I felt that you would ever call me to do, but when our head, when our pastor feels that you have spoken to him and then he relays, relays that message to us, we do what we're asked. I've been asked to give a word today. Lord, I pray that my thoughts are your thoughts, and my words are your words. My actions are your actions. Anoint the words that I speak so that they're not my own. They are yours. Anoint those that are here that are listening. Anoint those that are online so that they may hear. Anoint our online presence, Jesus. Anoint this church. Guide me today. In the lesson that I bring, in Jesus' name, Amen. amen. So, uh, first, let me ask y'all a question. Okay, who are you? Kind of a general question, kind of thing. Uh, depending on the situation, when someone asks you that, some would answer, "Well, my name is whatever." or uh, I'm so-and-so's father or mother or grandmother or grandfather or brother and sister 
or well I'm an employee at okay um, etc that's kind of our general way we would answer that right okay so that's kind of a hint so the title of today if you hadn't already guessed the title of the sermon today is who are you okay when God gave me the sermon that I fought against. I thought I knew what I was going to be preaching on. I wrote some stuff before, and I, yeah, oh, I got it. I picked it out. And then I realized I was doing the picking. Well, why don't I let God decide what I'm going to speak? There's a new concept. <laughs> so I listened to God. Didn't know that he was going to put together some of the things that I had written even as far back as last year, was put into the sermon today. He kept pointing back to some of the things that I'd been writing. A lot of things that I thought would be maybe a book or a sermon or a lesson or something, but it ended up a lot of it is, okay, Craig, these are some things that you need to be doing. So um, this does apply to me too. Uh, when he gave me the title, I wasn't thinking about Brother Jack's sermon for last week, which was, who's your God? So this isn't a thing that we planned. Now, is it a thing that God has planned? Maybe, but we, this, we didn't get together on this, okay? So, <laughs> so let's take the sermon title, Who Are You? Let's take that a little bit deeper, okay? If you're a Christian or a child of God, why isn't that the first thing that we think of when someone asks us who, who you are? Uh, or if you're wondering, what's my place in this world? So, why isn't Christian or a child of God the very first thing that we think of in the back of our mind? It should be our first thought, but it usually isn't because the person that we're talking to or where we're at at the time, being a Christian or a child of God doesn't seem to fit in that situation, okay? With everything going on in our daily lives and in the world around us, and we're not going to get into all that because we don't have enough time in, in the day, uh, we sometimes forget who we are, what we are, and who we're called to be as Christians. We don't think about that, unfortunately, on a daily basis like we should. And a lot of times, those thoughts, like I said, they're in the back of our mind. We need to start bringing them to the front. Christ is supposed to be first in all things. We're supposed to go to Him first in all things. Well, if us being a Christian is in the back of our mind, we're not. that's one of the things hindering us from doing that. So, again, fingers going here. In Ephesians, Paul wrote that some Bibles, what, what some Bibles call the spiritual blessings in Christ. That's the title. And did you know that you were blessed with every spiritual blessing that heaven has to offer? In Ephesians 1 and 3, it says, Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Christ, God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing that heaven has to offer. Do we... We might have heard that, but... Do we really know that? And now let's get even deeper, especially for a lot of our friends and family that are, might be online. 
Do you believe it? In the hard times that you're going through right now in your personal life and what's going on around us, do you actually believe that? We have a tendency to let what's going on in us and around us influence that. And again, we're not supposed to. So what are these blessings and how do they apply to me? Well, that's a good question, Brother Craig. Uh, so I'm going to tell you. This is what they are and how they apply to you. First, God chose and created you in His image. In Ephesians 1 and 4, Before the creation of the world, He chose us through Christ to be holy and perfect in His presence. You were chosen by Him not before you were born. How about before the creation of the world? You, you were chosen by Him to be who He is calling you to be. Second, God adopted you into His family. And as someone that is adopted, that means so much to know that there's a family out there that wanted you so bad that they chose you out of all the children they could have chose, they chose you. That's what it means to be adopted. Now let's take that to a scale that was hard for us to understand. God did that. He said, I want you in my family forever, to be by my side forever. He chose you to do that. In Ephesians 1, 5 through 6, we read, Because of His love, He had already decided to adopt us through Jesus Christ. He freely chose to do this so that the kindness He had given us in His dear Son would be praised and given glory. Third, this everybody should know, Jesus died for you, forgave you of your sins so that you could be with him forever. In Ephesians 1 and 7, through the blood of his son, we are set free from our sins God forgives our failures because of His unfailing kindness. His, His love that He had for you before you were created, He had planned on you being with Him. He had planned on you receiving Christ as your Lord and Savior, asking Him to forgive you of your sins and following a life that is like Christ. Fourth, God gave you wisdom and knowledge through His Word. His Word is Jesus. In Ephesians 1, 8 through 10, He poured out His kindness by giving us every kind of wisdom and insight when He revealed the mystery of His plan to us. He had decided to do this through Christ. He planned to bring all of history to its goal in Christ. Then Christ would be the head of everything in heaven and earth. The knowledge and the wisdom that He gives us, it's not all given to us at birth. It's not all given us when we're, say, 15, we have our driver's permit, and we think we know everything. Not pointing any fingers at anybody in particular, but we don't receive all our wisdom right then. We don't receive all our wisdom when we're in our 60s, and we wish we had it all by now. <laughs> so... Where do we get this knowledge? Where do we get this wisdom that He gave us? Well, yes, 
as we grow and we learn, He gives you wisdom. But the majority of the wisdom that He gave us is His Word. That's Scripture. That's Christ. So the more knowledge and wisdom you need for your everyday life and to be who you are called to be, it's right there in that book or on your cell phone or on your tablet. However you need to get the Word, that's where your knowledge and wisdom is going to come from the most. And if you don't have a Bible handy, there's this process that a lot of people have forgotten about. You, you can get on your knees, or even if you have to sit in a chair, or even if you're standing. This, this thing called prayer. So you can pray to God, your Father. Ask Him for the knowledge and the wisdom you need at that moment. And it might be something as simple as, okay, I know... I need 14 inches out of this board, but I don't know how I'm going to... Lord, you're going to have to help me with this. I, I know, I remember, I know how to cut this. I know how to get the measurements I need to finish this. I can't remember. Lord, I, give me the wisdom, Lord. I'm lacking right now. Guess what? He will show up at a moment like that that you would least suspect and give you the information you need. I know for a fact that he does that because I've had to ask him that before. So that's where you need to go the most. Go to scriptures. That's where your knowledge and wisdom will be coming from the most. All right. Fifth. Did you know every single person in here and every single person online, did you know that God chose you for a purpose according to his plan? Not ours, not what we think, not what we want, but according to His plan, He chose us for a purpose. In Ephesians 1, 11 through 12, God has decided ahead of time to choose us through Christ according to His plan, which makes everything work the way He intends. He planned all of this so that we who had already focused our hope on Christ, would praise Him and give Him glory. The last part is what kind of hurts me. The would praise Him and give Him glory. When you realize what your purpose is, what God's called you to do, are we always praising and giving Him glory for it? Because a lot of times, your purpose might be your position at work. Your purpose might be just a housewife, just a husband. Your purpose might be called to get up here and do this. And no, it's not comfortable. <laughs> and I'll admit, have I praised Him and given Him glory because He's called me to do this? No, I have not. And But I will before the end of the day. <laughs> but... That's, that's what I mean. It's, are we really doing that? This is Scripture. This is what God has given us. These are the things that we're supposed to be doing as Christians, following His Word, and we're not doing it. Me included. Sixth, God sealed His promise of salvation in every one of you with the Holy Spirit. The one that unfortunately is being left out of a lot of churches, different denominations are leaving out. Who the Holy Spirit is, the purpose of the Holy Spirit, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1, 13 through 14 says, you heard and believed the message of the truth, the good news that has saved you. In Him you were sealed with the Holy Spirit, whom He promised. The Holy Spirit is the guarantee that we will receive our inheritance. 
that inheritance is heaven and a life everlasting with God, the Father, His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit who lives in us. We have this guarantee until we are set free to belong to Him, God receives praise and glory for this. Again, at the end of that verse, God receives praise and glory for this. How many, unfortunately, how many churches out there don't read that and aren't doing that? They don't understand the fact that the Holy Spirit, if you are saved and you call yourself a Christian and a child of God, the Holy Spirit resides in you. That's the gift that Christ left when He rose from that grave. He's seated at the right hand of the Father right now. The Holy Spirit's who He left to guide us, but to give us the power and the anointing and spiritual gifts, the fruits of the Spirit. How often are we giving Him praise and glory for this? I'm not doing it enough. No. I'll admit that. I'm not. So let me kind of recap all these scriptures we just wrote. And I want this to really sink in. You know you're a Christian. You know you're saved. Been serving God for a while. So, you know, you've read Scripture. scripture. We sing songs that are powerful about worshiping our God and our Savior by praising Him. But these are things that we just read that we have a tendency to forget. So who are you? For those that are here and those that are online, if you have been saved, you have been born again, you're called to be a Christian, and you are a Christian or a child of God, this is who you are. You are chosen. God chose you. You were created by God. Before your mother and father were born, He planned on creating you, knew exactly how He was going to do it, when He was going to do it, where it was going to be, and how you were going to turn out. He planned that. You were adopted. You were adopted into the family of God. You were forgiven. Think of all the things, and I don't want to, but think of all the things that you have done that are wrong in your mind, what you consider wrong, what the world considers wrong. Then think of all the things that God says is wrong. It's against His Word and against His will. He forgave you for every one of those things when you received Him, Jesus, as Lord and Savior. And when you've done that, you are saved. You are saved from the grave of hell, everlasting hell, burning in hell forever and ever. You are saved from that, from the con- from being condemned. You are saved from that to be with Him forever in heaven. And He gave you wisdom starting before you even were able to read the Word. He was giving you wisdom. It was building in you because He had a purpose for you. And that's the next one. He gave you a purpose. We don't all know exactly what that purpose is, but He gave you a purpose in this life. And it's your goal, and it's your duty, and it's what you're called to do is to seek out that purpose. And guess what? Probably have more than one purpose in life. Seek out every one of them. Do not stop until your last breath, finding out, God, what's my purpose? And here's the tip. In the morning, God, what's my purpose today? Might be something totally new, something you've never thought of. But if you don't ask, how are you going to know? And then finally, you have been sealed 
with the Holy Spirit, a gift from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit has sealed you, He's claimed you, and living inside you. That's who you are. So someone asks, who are you? Oh, oh uh, I'm Craig Warner. My first thought and my first response should be, I'm a child of God. Oh, oh, my name, my name. Yeah, my name's Craig. I should be happy and thankful and so excited to answer with that first. That's who you are. Ephesians 2 and 10 says, God has made us what we are. He has created us in Christ Jesus to, to live lives filled with good works that He has prepared for us to do. Good works for us to do. So what are these? Well, let's look into that. Ask yourself, if am I a Christian? Am I a disciple? Or am I both? Good question. Not everybody knows where their place is. But let me help everyone who claims to be a Christian find the correct answer. The Webster Dictionary definition of a Christian is one who professes belief in the teachings of Jesus Christ. That's every, I would say that's probably every Christian. That's what they believe. That's what they mean when they're wearing the cross around their neck. They're professing that I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the Bible. Okay. We all know that being a Christian is hard in this day and time. But we were not called to be just Christians. That's, that's not enough. That's not what you were called to be. This is going to sound strange and wrong to a lot of people online that are in other churches and denominations. We were called to be disciples. That's what you were called to be when you received Christ as your Lord and Savior. So what is a disciple? We're not going to go to Webster's Dictionary because it points to a lot of things that aren't necessarily scriptural. It gives you a broad definition of a follower of somebody. Okay, this is what Scripture tells us. In Scripture, which is God's Word and definition, a disciple is a dedicated follower of Jesus Christ who lives according to Christ's teachings. So your life is guided and centered around the Word of God. A believer who follows Christ and dedicates their life to being like Christ. Not who you want to be. And that's that's hard every day. <laughs> That's so hard. But to be like Christ, that's, is that a goal we can ever reach? Well, no, we can't be Christ. That's not what it's asking. And that's what it doesn't tell us. It says to be like Christ. That's your ever-ending goal, is to be like Christ. That's something you have to do and search for every single day and next a believer who is dedicated in proclaiming the gospel saving the lost now here's the hard one and making disciples All right so wait a minute so i'm a christian but i'm called to be a disciple and I have to pro proclaim, I have to preach or, well, at least talk about the Word of God. I have to 
mention the Word of God. I have to witness with the Word of God. I have to bring the Word of God to people that I know. I have to save the lost. So I have to witness and bring the truth of salvation to those that are lost. I've heard all that. I, I can maybe do most of that. And then make disciples. How in the world am I going to make a disciple? Well, when you are, you don't become a disciple overnight. It's something that you, it's a never ending thing. You're constantly training and learning. And that's your goal is to be a disciple of Christ. It never ends. During that time, you're witnessing to other people. You're bringing them into the family of God. They get saved. Now, it's like being a mentor. Now, you're helping them to become disciples. That's not a choice. That's not, well, if I have time. Everyone that calls themselves a Christian is called to be a disciple and to make disciples, lead people in the same process that you're going through. In Matthew 28, 18 through 20, we read what the Bible calls the Great Commission. This is where a lot, again, denominations kind of stop short. It says, And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Guess what? That wasn't any of the disciples that said that. This is the this is a request no this is um not a if you have time or if you feel like it kind of thing this is a commandment from Jesus himself that we are to go and preach the gospel save the lost and make disciples and even though it's going to be hard he says, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. That's the Holy Spirit living in you. He never, he said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. In our rough times, we have a tendency to forget that. But the Holy Spirit's there to remind us. That's, that's Jesus. That's the Great Commission. That's what we're called to be is disciples. And that's why. Because Jesus himself said, this is what you are to do. If you call yourself a follower of me, if you call yourself a child of my Father God, then he said, this is what you are supposed to do. This is who you're supposed to be. This is what you're supposed to do. So therefore, we all need to do it, and that's what we're doing, right? Okay, maybe not like we're supposed to. Again, that, I'm using all the fingers pointing at me. James 1 and 22 says, But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Most Christians only believe the word of God. We know too many of those, unfortunately. But a disciple believes and does the word of God. That's the biggest difference. That's what this church is. That's what our pastor, Cain Wilson, is doing is being led by God in trying to do for us. And that is not be just believers, but be doers in our personal life and in our church life. You can't just read, study, or listen to the Word of God and not do anything about it to be what God called you to be a disciple. You can't just sit on the sidelines. Believing in God his Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit and His power, and learning the Word of God. 
is the first steps to becoming a disciple. Next, you have to put your beliefs and what you've learned into practice every single day, not just at church, not just at prayer. During this time of personal growth and learning and training in the Lord, you will find God's purpose for your life as a disciple. And you will see and find the blessings, rewards, and favor from God. Why? Well, because you're doing His will. That's what you ask every day. Your will be my will. Your ways, my ways. Start every morning off with that. These are just some of the gifts that God provides for you because of your dedication and love for seeking Him. So our main goal as a Christian is to be a disciple of Christ. Not searching only for how God can bless you and provide for you, and also searching for how God can use you to help others and lead others in their walk with Christ. There's more to this than I think anyone can imagine. It's, it's an ongoing, lifelong process to be a disciple and to be like Christ. Luke 6.40 says, A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone, when he is fully trained, will be like his teacher. Who's, who's your teacher? Jesus. So when you're fully trained, you're going to be like Jesus. When is that? Some, I don't know how many minutes or whatever that is after I have passed and I'm standing there in heaven in front of him. Between now and then... Nope, it's a long time. <laughs> but that's my goal. So when I get there before Him, that welcome, good, and faithful servant, I want that other part. And you are my disciple. You are like me. That's my goal. That's what I want to hear. This is our goal as Christians who are to be disciples, is to be like Jesus. It's in our worship. It's in our teachings here at this church. Like I said, this is there's a lot here. Some of you heard before. But we need to be reminded over and over what we're called to be, unfortunately, because, well, we're human and, <laughs> uh, and hard-headed. So we need to be reminded. And uh, yeah, and anybody that shook their head, no, we have an altar right here. Uh, so, <laughs> and, uh, but I thank y'all for listening. And I hope this resonates with you. And I hope you take it, not just take it home. I hope you take it with you when you walk out the door and it's with you every single day from now till the day you pass because we're not done. We're just starting. And it's not easy. Unfortunately, it's going to get harder. How do we know this? Well, we've read the last chapter of the book. We know what's coming and it's coming very, very soon. Just watch the news and you will find out. So this is our goal, to be like Jesus, to be His disciple. It's not easy, and it takes it takes our the leading of our pastor, the, the church elders. It takes you. It takes praying. It takes worship. It takes more than more than we know. But what it really helps is prayer. When you're lacking, when you're doubting prayer and ask God to help you and to guide you. So let's pray now. Lord, I've, at the beginning I thought that 
this all made sense what you gave me and as i was writing it i realized you were trying to tell me something about myself more than what i was bringing to others as i've been reading this i've been trying to fight back some of the tears and the hurt and the pain because i have to admit i have not been searching to be the disciple that you have called me to be. I try every day, but I know I can do better. And I know others that are listening to me right now, if they were truly honest with themselves, would say the same thing. Well, I call myself a Christian or a child of God. Or they might even say, yes, I'm a disciple of Christ. But if they're really, really honest, like me, they would, it would be hard for them to admit that I'm not the disciple that I should be. I know I'm just starting out, or I know I've been trying for years, but I've been lacking because Jesus, you have not been my main focus every moment of every day. You haven't been my main focus. Your desires and needs for me has not been my main focus. Being like you, being a disciple, has not been my main focus, especially now with the way the world is and the things that are going on around us in our personal lives, in this church, in the world. This is the time, more than ever, that we need to be searching for that discipleship to be like you so that you can work in us and through us. Lord, I ask that you would remind everyone that hears this word, this lesson today, keep reminding them every day of who they are in you and who they're called to be, which is the disciple. Give them the knowledge, the wisdom they need. Give them the anointing that they need. Give them the direction they need. I ask that you'll bless every one of them. Protect everyone, not just from the enemy's attack, but for from them own, their own self. Because we do a lot of damage to ourself because of other influences. But we do it. It's our choice to do it. Bless everyone. Keep all those that hear. Keep everyone safe. Everyone healthy. I ask that you will continue to bless this church, our pastor, Kane Wilson. You will bless the members of this church, those that attend online. And I ask that you will continue to prepare a way for others to come and start preparing the hearts and minds and the souls of those that you are calling to come or to listen online. Thank you for this time that we've had with you. In Jesus' name, amen.